Hey Bulldogs, Chris Bryant here, and thanks for joining me for today's CCNA video practice exam, What is Truth? Getting a little deep here, but I promise you, you will not get the bins when you come up from this video practice exam. Plus, I'm going to hit you with a non-Zen bonus question on the live equipment. And as always, I'll have a couple of demos here for you, and we'll go through some answers on live Cisco routers and switches. want to invite you out to join us in the CCNA 2012 video boot camp. It's now fully downloadable, which every single student in the course loves. You can still watch the videos online anytime you like, as often as you like, but you can also download them full 30-day money back guarantee. You've got access to me on a private forum and I don't give you small samples of any of my courses. You get a full free hour and that free video content covers OSPF, especially the hub and spoke config. So it's definitely worth checking out. We've got the bit.ly uh, address for you there on the screen. I'll have it in the YouTube description as well. You can come out to the main site and find it very quickly as well. So I look forward to seeing you there. Let's jump straight into today's questions. going to go through them in a pretty good clip. So if you want to pause the video and think about one for a few seconds that's fine you are required to enter which of these when you're configuring EIGRP got an AS number process number network mask area number version number which of these statements is true regarding ISL what does it do is it Cisco proprietary what's the overhead What's the native VLAN, or does it use the native VLAN? Third question, which of these statements is true of a root bridge? And in ENF, of course, I'm talking about a tiebreaker if it was a tie in priority. And let's get to the last question, what is true of VLANs? Well, actually, it's not the last question. I have one for you on the live equipment, too. Broadcast domains drove me crazy when I first started studying. I think that's why I like to ask about them so often. Make sure everybody's clear. All right, we've hit those questions. Like I said, we're going to be spending a couple of minutes here on the live equipment very shortly. If you're watching this on YouTube, fantastic. Glad to have you along. Please subscribe while you're here. Also, I'm out on Twitter. We've got our blog, and I'm on Facebook as well. And I've got some great free CCNA and CCNP ebooks coming out and some other topics that I can't talk about yet, but they're going to start coming out in March 2012, including all of my other CCNA and CCNP study guides. Got to charge a few bucks for those, but you'll enjoy the price. And those are not going to be one page free ebooks or anything like that. Plenty of good content for you, only from TBA. Now let's jump back through these questions. Which one of these is true in an EIJRP config? Well, let's start one. And I'll call up the live equipment there. Now, router EIGRP, you've got to put the autonomous system number here. Of course, with RIP, you don't need to put anything. And with OSPF, that's where you have a process number. There are no other options there. And if we look at the network command, you've got the network number. You've got to put that. Makes sense. And the only other thing, the only other option you even have right there is the EIGRP wildcard bits. It's not a network mask. It's not a subnet mask. It's a wildcard mask. Very important distinction there. And as you can see, it's also a legal command by itself because anytime you see CR here for carriage return, then you know that's a legal command. So the only one of those on the board that is actually required is the AS number because EIGRP doesn't use process numbers, it doesn't use network mass in the config, it doesn't use area numbers, and it does not use version numbers. ISL. ISL is primarily a trunking protocol. And of course, you had a hint there when I was mentioning comparisons to IEEE.1Q. Uh, which, of course, we usually just say .1Q. So A is true. It's primarily a trunking protocol. B really refers more to VLAN trunking protocol, VTP. ISL is indeed Cisco proprietary, and it doesn't even run on all Cisco switches, including some very popular lab models, but it is Cisco proprietary. Uh, the problem with ISL is that it does have a greater overhead than .1Q, because it does not use the native VLAN. Instead, ISL is going to encapsulate every single frame that it's going to send across the trunk, and that includes frames destined for the native VLAN. So our correct answer is here. It's primarily a trunking protocol. It is Cisco proprietary, and it has greater overhead than .1Q. 
Now about what is true of a root bridge? Well, as strange as it sounds, especially when you first start studying, a root bridge does not have root ports because it doesn't need to have a root port because what does a root port do? It leads to the root bridge and it sounds a little zen here, but if you are the root port, you don't need, excuse me, the root bridge, you don't need a path to the root bridge. So the first correct answer here is A. Now when it comes to the priority, the lowest priority actually wins. So D is our next correct answer. And then finally, what's the tiebreaker? The MAC address. There's actually no such thing as a switch RID. Uh, but the MAC address, of course, the lowest MAC address is going to win there as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at what is true of VLANs. Now the first choice is not correct because creating VLANs actually results in more broadcast domains which sounds bad when you first start studying. That's what drove me crazy. Uh, but the more broadcast domains you have, the fewer overall broadcasts you actually end up with because you're limiting the scope of the broadcast. So A is false, but B is true. VLANs do allow you to group ports in a logical manner. It's very commonplace to see a switch in a uh, production network where the VLANs are numbered, of course, by default, but someone's given them names like, you know, accounting, you know, security, etc. And the default VLAN is not VLAN 0, it's VLAN 1, you know that. And the default native VLAN is also VLAN 1. Now let's bring up the equipment here because I want to ask you one more question. Let's go ahead and see if I can bring a switch up here. I cannot tell a lie, I forgot which connections I had open. Don't want to do that one. I knew we could find it. Last place you look. I'm going to run show VLAN brief here. And I believe we have one non-default VLAN. Yeah, we do 14. But notice VLAN 1 is even given the name default. And that's where all your ports are by default. Makes sense. Now let me ask you really quick. Where are the other ports? If I tell you this is a 12-port switch and you run show VLAN brief, where are the other three ports? What's the next command you should run? It's show interface trunk, because on a switch they're probably trunking, and as you can see here they are, ports 10, 11, and 12. They're all in dynamic desirable mode as you'd expect. They're all running .1Q encapsulation. They are all trunking, and there's that native VLAN again, VLAN number one. So again, I always like to start with show VLAN brief, because that just gives you this bit of information, and that's all you really need to get started. But then if you see some, if you notice some ports are missing, run show interface trunk because they're not going to show under show VLAN brief. And that is it for today's video practice exam. Thanks again for joining us and thanks for making TBA part of your CCNA success story.